Hello, everybody. I'm Christian Coachman, and I'm back with Coffee Break with Coachman, this uh, interview show that allows me, that gives me the honor to uh, interview some of the most brilliant and some of the coolest people in the industry. And it's really always an honor for me to welcome my guests because we do handpick very well who we're going to interview and today i have one more special guest kim sorensen is the ceo and the founder of the danish dental unit manufacturing company exo care it's an awarded company that it has been designing uh, equipments with excellence you know design thinking as they say uh in an extremely high level and as everybody knows, you know, I'm a fan of design, not only about smile design, but design in general. Absolutely everything in the world that is well designed, I'm attracted to absolutely everything. So uh, for me, it was a natural move uh, when I first saw the equipments that they were developing. I'm definitely not afraid uh, to say that it's probably, you know, the best dental chair in the market, the most sophisticated one for sure. And at least, at least the best design I ever saw, the best ergonomic design and beauty, you know, because you can have beauty and not be very ergonomic. You can have ergonomic and not being very beautiful. Uh, and everything they do is beautiful and it's well thought out. So I was immediately attracted. By the way, I use many photos from then in my lectures since years when i talking about the dsd room the modern dental office uh how to exceed patients expectations so many of the people listening that were in my courses in the past probably saw pictures you didn't know maybe uh it was in the corner written there exocare uh technology exocare design exocare solution so this person right in front of me is the founder and the CEO of this uh, amazing high quality standard equipment uh, company. So Kim Sorensen, thank you very much for your precious time. Thank you very much for uh, allowing us to collaborate. We're gonna talk at the end of the show a little bit about the collaboration between DSD and Exo. Okay, what does that mean? Why we are co-endorsing each other? Why do we feel comfortable endorsing each other why do we have the pleasure uh to say that we collaborate together so first of all thank you for this collaboration thank you for this endorsement thank you for the amazing work that you do and thank you for being here with us to share some thoughts with the dsd community i want to welcome you to the show and i want you to say hello to the dsd community and explain to us who is kim Sorensen. Thank you very much. It was a very long and very honorable introduction of me and my company. So but I'm the one who is uh, who owes you, uh, I think, a lot of credit for partnering up with us and uh, doing, let's say, what I think we have common goals of wanting to uh, help dental practices to uh, work in, in even better ways, what we call extraordinary dentistry. And um, my background is that I'm an engineer, but I lived my whole life uh, designing and manufacturing uh, dental chairs, units, solutions. So um, I have a long history in, in this business. And uh, yeah, this is my life, you can, you can say. How many years in dentistry? Uh, 42, three years, 43 years almost. Huh? Wow. And, and when, uh, when did you found ExoCare? How did you start? Uh, you start working where and when did you found ExoCare? Yeah, but the company was actually founded by my father under a different name called Flex Dental. Okay. So, uh, I, but I joined the company as uh, 23 years old, and my father he he died shortly after. So I've been running the company since the the, the end of the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is the background. You know, when I was a kid, I was in. My father had he was had a workshop. He was doing servicing dental units. So uh, I've been you know since I was a small kid, I've been sitting in dental chairs. Maybe a little bit like you from let's say from yeah. a different perspective. But, uh, yeah, yeah. 
So it was injected into me when I was a child. Now, one thing is to design, uh, it's to manufacture good quality dental equipments. Another thing is to bring super high level uh, concepts of design into the equipment. Uh, as an engineer, you don't necessarily need to be, uh, you need to understand design, but you don't necessarily need to be, make design your passion. I see that design is your passion. So uh, how did you combine engineering with this artistic side? Where did you learn design? And how did you fall in love with design? And how did you bring this to dentistry? It's a good question. <laughs> it's, I, I never studied design. So, uh, but I, I had some good uh, masters, I would say. And uh, the best, the, the best, the, what I learned the most from is, is a, was a, a man called Mr. Leonard Booth. Uh, I bought his company about uh, 25 years ago and worked together with him for, for many years. He was a great designer, I would say. Also, also autodidact like, like myself, but I learned a lot from him. And, and I think that his, his thinking and my thinking nowadays is, is very much based on the Bauhaus tradition from, yeah. from Germany. Yeah. You know, very simple, sim very simple designs. You know, nothing, no, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what, how do you call that in English? No uh, stripes or, or, or things that no you don't... No yeah. accent. Back to basics. Yeah. The, the absolute minimum that you need. This is, I think it's also... I think in our country in Denmark, we had a long tradition for, let's yeah. say, make things very lean, very simple. I, I actually love uh, design, design in general from the Nordic countries. You know, you guys are really masters on many different levels and many different areas of design. So uh, having a company leading design on dental equipments uh, is not a coincidence. Uh, it's something that it's natural for you guys. That's beautiful. You know, you mentioned something uh, about uh, simplicity, and we learn from one of the best designers ever. Uh, I believe Da Vinci said, "You know, simplicity is the ultimate level of sophistication." So, what, what, how is the process? Because there's two things that you guys do very well, I believe: uh, create sophistication with simplicity, and combine aesthetics with function. How can you explain? this process of making um, not superfluous, excessive beauty, but uh, beauty from efficiency and from simplicity. Yeah, I, I think it's a kind of process that is difficult to explain. Yes. It, it is something, it's a kind of, I would not say artistic, but it's more art, art, art than it's engineering, or it's a combi combination of those those two yeah. things. that. Uh, on the one hand side, you must, we must, I feel we must do something that is working, uh, you know, things where they belong. Mm -hmm. when speaking about dental equipment, that, that, that it's functional. I think, of course, it, you need, I mean, one thing is a good design and aesthetics, but if not functional, it doesn't really help anything, I think. So it, it first, it, the first requirement is that it must be functional, it must do the job, so to say. And then second, uh, we try to say, how can we, how can we, let's say, without losing focus on doing the job, how can we make it look good? And that is a, that is often the very long process that takes, I mean, can take many, many iterations and long time. Now, you guys use a lot of the latest technologies, uh, of course, uh, to create the equipments, to plan uh, the, the projects and the manufacturing and, and the pieces and everything. Uh, but with all the technologies that you use to uh, produce, to, to uh, manage the projects and manufacture the products, uh, how is the beginning of the process? Is it, is it is still very analog, very artistic? You know, how do you sketch your ideas? How do you translate the first step? Uh, my, my, I think the first step is uh, watching the co our customers the dentist working. How how do you work? And uh, I think it's I, I mean it's very interesting to go to a dental practice and sit, be a fly on the wall, so to say, see what 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 do they do? Uh -huh. And uh, then I I have I have often wondered why why do they do what why do they do the things 
or how, why do they work like they work the our customers and um, and then you know the next step is to say what what could be done how could it be done in a different way but i but also i think very important is how can we use technology i'm, I'm an engineer you know how can we use technology to create solutions that can help our customers to work in a more in a better way mm -hmm. so the process i think starts in by by watching the user so understanding, the needs. understanding the needs so it's not from an artistic vision and then you start and you try to fit the need you no. start from the need yes. and then through the process you bring your taste of art and design to make it look good yes. but i think first the function comes first it yeah. must it must do the job yeah. and, and then uh, the the design or the looks or the aesthetics comes and maybe it's a kind of combination, but but I, I, I never compromise on function. Yeah. Maybe uh, maybe yeah. many dentists maybe many many dentists should uh, should unfortunately learn from that because you know we see nowadays unfortunately this this whole thing with aesthetics and superficial aesthetics and the veneers and the small uh, makeovers where people are putting aesthetics above function, you know. Now, being functional can be also beautiful, but beautiful should not never come before function. Is that the way you think? No, but I think it's a combination. Of, yeah. I think it's a kind of, I think it's a kind of iterative process. You know, the first design doesn't look very good, yeah. and maybe it doesn't function very good either. Then it, the process, it's a long process, so gradually the the the, the, the design becomes better. And, but I think that the most difficult thing is to not not only have function but also have good aesthetics to, to have both. But I think also a combination. Those, those two things are. I mean, it's the same process. If you cannot split them, you cannot yeah. first make the function and afterwards make the design. You need to to do it in a kind of let's say combined process. And do you agree that usually, usually, naturally, when you develop something that is functioning so so well naturally it usually looks good as well no i don't think so no i think it's a very good function that looks really bad yeah because, <laughs> you know function usually for me it's a hint you know it, it gives you a hint that if something functions well uh then you can be creative to make it look better right yes. uh, at the end of the day if you are you if you have to make a decision on a certain feature of your equipment that uh, is functioning very well but is not looking good but if you make it look better it harms a little bit the function yeah. uh, you know which side would you compromise i i i, I find it hard to fun to compromise on the function I, I think it must it must work well so you push yourself to be creative not harm function and find a way to look as best as possible I try, I try, you know, to to go around the, if if the function is to start with, uh, let's say, it leads to a design that doesn't look good. Uh, it, I think it's hard work. You then I, you have to go through many processes, and then hopefully, and probably in most most more, more normally in the end, it 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 it's, it's possible to find that ways also of making it look good to combine the two. Normally possible, but it. But it takes a very, very long time. I, I mean, sometimes people say to me, why do you never finish what you do? Mm -hmm. And um, and this is the reason is that, that I want to both make it functional and make it look good. Mm -hmm. Now you have, a your company has a tagline that I really like. You say uh, extraordinary dentistry. What is yeah. exactly you guys want to, me want to mean when you say uh, extraordinary dentistry? What yes, uh, what what I would first I would I would you know, I would I would say that it's it's in contrast to ordinary dentistry. That's and a good start. In my eyes, it's something better than let's say ordinary dentistry. Uh, but also, I think it's about it's about uh, giving value to the customers. I mean, it's not only about selling a dental chair. It's also that the, the, the our customers that invest in our in our solutions that they get value for the money. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by by value? I think there are, I think there are 
we are looking at four different uh, dimensions of value. One, one, and one thing, and that is often very, I think, uh, not very, uh, let's say, oh, it's, I would say in the, in the dental unit business, many people uh, think that a dental unit is a dental unit. I mean, it's, they are, it's a kind of generic product. Everybody says it's the same. Maybe the only difference is the price and maybe the design. Mm -hmm. But I also think that the, that, that the functionality is very important. Yeah. But why, why does, uh, why do the, 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 the practices invest in a dental unit? They do that because like you, you want to make teeth. Yeah. So, so it, of course it matters something that you have a good tool that can really help you making yeah. work in your for your patients. And so the first thing is the, the, the quality of treatment to really give the customers, the users, a good tool that really works. Mm -hmm. And the second value is also is looking from the point of the patient, the, the patient are comfortable and safe. That's also important. Also, that they can stay calm, that if they are comfortable and feel safe, probably they are more relaxed and you can easily uh, work with on them. Yeah. And the third thing is the, the health of the dental, dental team themselves. Many dentists, they have health problems. So that's also, why I think, an important posture. Posture, yeah, that many, really many, most dentists have yeah. some kind of problem with their health. And the last and fourth thing is that dentistry, dental practices is also a business that there must also be a profitability and there must be a, it must be a high productivity in the, in the work. So they, those are our four, let's say, uh, my, uh, how can you say, four, four value dimensions. Yeah. And, that is and, a dentistry. If you can do all those four things, we make- You're doing extraordinary. Extraordinary dentistry. But I can tell you that, uh, you know, with DSD, we research and we try to understand a lot the behavior of patients when they see professionals that are beyond average, right? How can you make people perceive you as different, as extraordinary, as not a common? How can you stand out? How can you differentiate yourself? And, uh, you know, how can you create a special experience for the patient? And what is the impact that this generates in the psychology of the patient? Uh, many times without the patient even noticing, you know, this is the perceived value, the unconscious perceived value that will bring return on the investment for the doctor. So I believe that uh, having equipment, it's proven that high-end design and high-end technology generates an unconscious positive response on people. People relate high-end design, high-end sophistication, high-end technology to quality, to trust, to confidence, to comfort, and so on. So I believe that all these factors are coming embedded in, the, in a chair like this. Do you agree? I agree, yes. I also think, you know, Many patients, I, I think patients in general, it's difficult for, for a patient to, 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 to judge whether a dental dentist is doing a good job or not doing a good job. How, how can they do it? I mean, maybe in your business with aesthetics, you can see, let's say, the, the difference by speaking about traditional dentistry. It's not easy for the patients to, to judge that. So I think a signal for Quality is that how how does the practice look when you come yeah. into the practice? No, no professional or not? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, no. So all the factors come, you know, all the details will generate a, a psychological impact that at the end of the day will make the patient judge. Patients are constantly judging, and as you said, since they don't know dentistry, and since dentistry is very hard for a non-dentist to value. This judgment is a combination of factors and it's a, it's a mix of factors. Okay. Yes, if, if you do a crown and you bite and it breaks, you know it was poorly done, but many times uh, patients don't know how to value that. So they are unconsciously looking around and at the end of the day, giving a rate, a grade, right? For this dentist and uh, all these details count and I can tell you that design, quality, sophistication, behavior, experience, ambience, everything counts. I agree. You're right. Now, 
Yeah. Now, when uh, you know when when a dentist looks at your chair and and tells you it looks cool, but uh, uh, you know there's another chair that is one third of the price. You know, uh, I know you gave a summary of the extra the four areas of the extraordinary dentistry concept. But what, when a dentist is uh, challenging you with the value uh, and you only have a few seconds, what are the words that you would use to make the patient, the doctor rethink what he just said and give a consider, you know, exploring having a chair like yours? Yeah, well, I would, I would first uh, try to understand what, uh, what are the, let's, the, the values of this specific, if it's, if it's a specific, then says that I speak with, what is this person's values? Is it about making the best possible treatments? Is it about having health problems for himself or herself? Or what is it? So I have my four, the four uh, topics that we started that I mentioned before. So I would try to understand which one of those four topics mm -hmm. is the most interesting for this person. Mm -hmm. And then I will explain our solution. Why is our solution to this specific topic uh, good. I can do that very, very easily. If you, if you, for example, if I have somebody like you who is, who is, I believe, is very interested in making high quality treatments, mm -hmm. I will speak about the how precisely you can control the, the instruments of the unit, that the instruments are placed so that you can can reach the instruments without losing focus of the patient, so you don't have to look away and 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 focus and make a big, higher quality work. So I, would, I would speak about things like that. But in general, I would also speak about the, let's say, the, 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 the lifetime the, or the service life of the product because our units in, are normally used for, with about, in a, for a period of about 20 years. So the, the time of depreciation is about 20 years. And I think not all units on the market last for 20 years. So if you take, even though the price may be, uh, let's say, the double of an ordinary unit, uh, if the if it lasts the double time, it has a double time. It doesn't cost more. It just it's just just a better solution. And, and may I add one thing? You know, uh, as you said, uh, function and beauty don't necessarily come together. And you you may have an amazing equipment that can last for twenty years, but maybe it's not going to look good or be out of trend. You know, in ten years and. What I like about the fact that you guys focus on clean and simple sophistication design is that usually it becomes a classic, right? You know, good design is not about the trend. It goes beyond the trend and it becomes a classical design, meaning you look at something that was designed, you know, Bauhaus 50 years ago and it still looks good, right? So you're, do you believe that the chair that you're designing today has such a quality of design that will still look good in 20 years. But I can tell you that the chair that we that we sell today was the, the basically, or let's say the, the, the basic model of this chair was brought on the market about 16 years ago. So, and, I mean, so it has already been 16 years. Well, it is, we have made lots of improvements and, and so on, but basically the basic, product yeah. is year, 16 years old. And I think, I mean, it can, can last for many more years. So. And it then after that, it will last 20 years in, in the dental practices. So I think the life span of our products is something maybe it's 40, 50 years. It's a, it's a long, it's long time span. Yeah. And, so. and, and if a doctor tells you, you know, uh, I know you guys are saying that you have amazing design. I, I don't care about design that much. Why design is important. How would you answer this? To the person, the importance of this design. It's. I mean, if 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 I was a dentist, I would sometimes try to put myself in the situation of my of my customer, and I think what what you can say about den dental practitioners is that that you work uh, eight hours a day on the, on your unit, your chair, every day of the week for maybe twenty years. I mean, maybe you spend like twenty, thirty thousand hours with this chair. It's a lot of there's nothing, no, maybe in your bed you spend as much time, but apart from that, you don't, you don't spend so much time with anything. So 
I mean, sitting down with your chair every day, if you if you if it looks good, if it, it still looks good after a long time, I mean, it, it matters something. I think for your yeah. well-being. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so that's one thing. But also, if you have, if you want some, in some places, it's difficult to attract employees. If you want to attract employees, I mean, one of the things you can do is to having a nice-looking practice and also nice-looking units. And even for the patients, like we spoke about before, that that they. If, if they see a practice that looks good with good looking chairs and units, I mean, it's a way to, to attract patients. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, you, we definitely, I, I definitely understand the, the, the importance for the dentist. You know, uh, if you're going to spend almost eight hours of your day, Monday to Friday for decades, yeah. can you imagine, you know, one third of your professional life? at something ugly that's the first point that you made that i think is very important the other point you know the impact on the patient we already mentioned that the psychological impact on the patient but you mentioned a new point that i like very much uh the impact on the staff you know uh uh uh, a good looking practice not only will make the existing staff be more proud and happier to work there but you probably will attract more better people right good people smart people uh are attracted by good things you know so if you have a a office that looks good you have a tendency to attract better people to work with you i agree yeah i i will make note of that point because that is a that's something that just came to my mind after you mentioned that and 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 that is definitely definitely true you know i have seen your office it looks very good (laughs) It works. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, uh, where do you see where do you see the industry going, and and what are the new projects that you guys are involved? I mean, I I think that the in let's say in general, uh, I think that that the 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 the, the trend is that dental practices they get bigger. You know, they, they, they in the old days or until recently, a dental practice was uh, with a, one dentist and a few uh, employees. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, we have the big uh, dental uh, uh, groups, and um, so I think that to, that you have the big practices with many uh, uh, operators and many employees, meaning that you must have solutions that are easy to to understand and to work with because people are maybe working part-time in the in the practice they right. never read the instructions for use or so it must be intuitive and easy to to work with the product and understand the product i think that is getting more and more important that's also something to, to do with design i think to make it look to make it easy to and intuitive to use and work with another thing that trend is that 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 we are we, we need to document more and more what we do. I mean, all of us, I mean, us, the manufacturers, we, we have a lot of new legislation that requires that we document everything we do. And I think even in for dentists, this is the trend that we need to document everything. So we need also to make solutions that that they can help the, 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 the dental practice to, to document what they do, actually. And and the, and the third thing is my, very much has been emphasized, I think, by the COVID situation that that's about the 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 the, the sepsis and the cross contamination problems. That uh, I mean, many people have been speaking a lot about aerosols the last mm-hmm. yeah. One. yeah oh yeah and so basis and uh, so and, and the fact is that that the that that some studies show that it shows that in a dental operatory. Uh, everything is uh, aerosols, they go everywhere. They, they just don't stay around the mouth, mouth of the patient, they, they spread all over the room. So, so I also think that, that, that you know, traditionally, dentists, they were storing, all, they, the, the, the treatment room was also a storage room for all kinds of things. Yeah. But yeah, as aerosols are spreading everywhere, then you need to disinfect, I mean, everything, practically everything in the, in the treatment room. So I think the time of, of storing things in the treatment room is are over. You need to have them in the sterilization somewhere else and only, let's say, bring in the things that you actually need for the, for the treatment. Yeah. Kind of lean, lean thinking. So I think lean thinking from manufacturing 
will also come into the answer plane so that, that you plan your work, you bring into the to the operatory only the things that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they need to be easy to clean. Pardon? They need to be easy to clean. Yes, easy and fast, not, not, but not to clean more than necessary. And I also think that dentists will have to, because because of the cleaning will anyway take longer time and disinfection than, than before. So I think to, to, to maintain a high productivity, uh, dentists need more than one chair. Maybe they need two, maybe they need three chairs that they can work on one chair while the other or the two others are cleaned and disinfected. That is a way to, 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 to keep up the, the, the productivity. So that also puts some requirements on the on the on the on the design of the unit and on and, and on the working space. I think also the, the size of the treatment room will get smaller so that you can have more treatment rooms in the same, let's say, practice size. Yeah. Yeah. So there are some friends that that I think that I see. Yeah, the architectural projects for modern clinics will change a little bit, not only uh, bringing uh, concepts of good taste and design and experience, ambience, but also efficiency, ergonomics, biosafety. So I know that your equipments are in line with all these adjectives, right? Uh, biosafety, simplicity, user-friendly, design, aesthetics, function, ergonomics, uh, ambience, um, experience, and performance. These are, I think, the best words to describe all the good ideas that we are bringing into dentistry. At the beginning of the interview, I mentioned the reasons why uh, I was happy with our collaboration, I was happy with our co-endorsement and so on. Uh, to finish our our interview, I wanted you to say a few words of why uh, ExoCare uh, is uh, collaborating with DSD and how do you see this collaboration? No, but I, I think we are we have very much the the, the, the same thinking and the, that that we that we want to do the best for our for our customers. I mean, I mean, you, you, I think your tagline could also be extraordinary dentistry. It could and, be. And I think we have the same, I mean, very much the same competences and experience. We use them for different purposes. I mean, your, your services are not the same as, as our services, but I think we complement each other very well. And uh, so th this is more or less my, my thing. I really like to, to say, to, to work with and to know people who are, who are thinking about aesthetics and mm -hmm. quality and improvement of, of life for, and in our case, for our customers, dental practices, I think that we have really many, 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 many uh, common uh, aspects. So I, I think it's, uh, it's very logic that we work together and we share experiences. And I also think and hope that we will together be able to maybe to develop some new solutions and create some new extraordinary things for our customers. This is the beginning. We're going to start sharing ideas. And it's going to be a pleasure for me, you know, to work with uh, R&D and possibilities and the vision of what we believe the modern smile rehabilitation clinic should look like. And to, uh, to initiate this collaboration for our clients, I actually wanted to announce two, two special things that we together decided to, to offer to our uh, communities, you know. Uh, for our DSD clinics, we together decided to uh, offer a very, very interesting discount on the ExoCare unit to every DSD clinic. So for the ones listening, you know, I really encourage you to take a look at their website, at their uh, equipments. Uh, there's no way you're not going to fall in love with it. And uh, if, if you want to learn more about it and... Um, if you are a DSD clinic, you're gonna have you're gonna get a very special discount. In the other hand, uh, DSD is giving an amazing discount, you know, uh, of actually 20% in our next DSD residency that is actually happening uh, in Dusseldorf in I believe two weeks or two re three weeks, uh, no, uh, beginning of December. Uh, we actually got the permissions and we are flying to Germany. I'm super excited because uh, after one year. 
we are able to actually fly somewhere and give an in-person course, of course, following all the, the biosafety rules, but we're going to be in person interacting with uh, an amazing group of uh, German doctors, and we want to extend this special discount to all ExoCare customers, to the whole ExoCare uh, community. So amazing discount for whoever wants to learn. Uh, you know, if you get an, an ExoCare unit, uh, you need to plan the strategies to get your return on the investment and to attract the right patients and to grow your small rehabilitation clinic. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about at the DSD residency. So, Kim, I want to thank you again for your time. Uh, I really appreciate the beginning of our friendship and our relationship here and our professional collaboration. Count on me personally. And hopefully very soon we're going to be meeting again in person to celebrate this, to cheer and to have a good drink, hopefully in a beautiful, in a beautiful place with beautiful design around us. And I want you to finish with your final message to the DSD community. Thank you very much. And uh, I can only agree with you that, that I think the, this, this uh, special advantages that we give to our common uh, customers I can only say to everybody, please, please make use of these uh, offers. I think both of your your seminars and for our treatment solutions. So we welcome you, everybody, to contact us and use these. I think extraordinary offers. And thank you very much, Christian, for your kind words. And I'm also looking very much forward to con this continued collaboration with you. It will Fantastic. be good. Fantastic. All the best. And Thank you. you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.